Hi, I'm Chuck Dorset for Weaver Leather Supply. Let's make a hat the elves would be proud of, and let's have fun with this one. All right, so anything I use in this video, weaverleathersupply.com, or check below. We've got links there. Going to take you straight to the website. Also, if you want to know when our videos release, just click your notifications. You'll know exactly when these come out. Let's make a hat. Oddly enough, this is a tough pattern to create from scratch. We've got all kinds of things going here. Well, first off, we've got this big cone, and at what point in this cone actually fits our head. But secondly, we've got this big circumference cut. Strangely, that's the easiest part of the pattern. Now, in elementary school, we could always just cut a big triangle. We fold that over, okay? We sew on this long side. Well, when we open this up, well, now our point is all the way front or all the way back, not what we're looking for. How about we sew on our shorter side? That gets our point centered. But when we open this up, yeah, now we've got kind of a Napoleon thing going, something, something else we're not looking for. So what we're going to do, we can use all kinds of complex math to figure this out, or we can use a little math and a little common sense. Let's go that route. So let's step over to our main table and actually create our pattern from scratch. We're not going to go with a digital pick on this one. Everybody's different case by case basis, but use this as a jumping off point. Now I mentioned this is a tough pattern to create from scratch. Well, actually only half of it is. We're going to start with the easy part. So let's start here. We're going to make our hat 14 inches tall. So on a piece of poster board, I've come up on a center line about 15 inches and I've got a thumbtack right here. So what we need is a big circumference curve, cut or mark. Here's the easiest way to do that. So right here, we've seen this in a shop tricks video. What I've got is a simple tape measure and say I need six inches or 10 inches. I'm just going to punch a hole in that with my revolving punch. Now it makes that super easy to do. Well, now we've got a bit of a problem here. Well, right here, I'm actually coming in a quarter of an inch, usually not an issue, but on a circumference cut, here's the problem. So say we're going to go 12 inches around. Well, 12, that's our radius, times 2 diameter, times pi, 3.14, that's 75.3 inches. If we just move out 2 inches, now it's 88 inches. So a quarter inch can be a problem. Here's where I'm going with that. So our first mark is going to be at 12. So I've actually punched a hole 1 quarter of an inch past 12. That's going to be exact. So let's do this. Let's make two marks, two curves. I'm going to make one at 12 inches and one at 14 inches. And I went off the edge on both sides, doesn't matter. We're only going to use about a third of this, but how easy is that, right? Now, if we don't want to put a hole, a nail or a tack in our work surface, or say our kitchen table or coffee table, let's just run a tack through a piece of tape, tape that down, that's going to work just as well. We're not adding a lot of pressure to this. So what we've got, 12 inches, or about 30.5 centimeters, 14 inches, about 35.5 centimeters, okay? Let's switch gears, because now we need to fit this to our head. For me, I'm going to measure my head roughly around my forehead. 22 inches is comfortable, not too tight. I don't want this too tight. So if we think about it, on our 12-inch line, we just need 11 inches on either side. And we're going to do this cheaply. But if you're inclined to do the math, we can do that. In fact, here's my original pattern. Yeah, there's a little math involved. But let's do this. So with a calculator, 12 inches, that's our radius. So 12 times 2 that's our diameter. That's all the way across our circle, times pi, 3.14. That means our line, our 12-inch line, is 75.36 inches long, okay? Let's divide that by 360 degrees. So therefore, every degree is 0.2 inches, or about a fifth of an inch, okay? So let's do this. Let's take 22 times 5. That's 110. That means we need 110 degrees. So with our protractor, we can lay this down and we can count out 55, 55 degrees on either side. We're not going to go this route. Well, first off, how many of us still have a protractor? But secondly, on this dinky little protractor, it's going to be hard to get that right. So let's just do this. Let's take our tape measure right on this line. I'm going to come out. I'm going to take my time, but let's come out 11 inches. And like I said, this does not have to be absolutely perfect. Right there. There's my 11-inch mark. Let's do the same thing on this side. So we've got 11 
each side of our center line. So now let's draw a line from that mark to our center point. Okay, we've got that. Now we're going to use suede, so that is not going to come to a tight point for us. So let's round this off. We can use just about anything, but let's jump back to our protractor and let's just round that point. Well, that's easy enough, so let's cut this out. And let's see if we can split that ink line. We absolutely can. Okay, so there's our pattern for our hat. Let's reset here. We're going to taper our two inch band. We're going to taper each side. We're going to come in about half of an inch. We can come in a little bit more, but what happens is when we turn this into a cone, if we've got too much taper here, it's actually going to pinch in instead of be parallel. So let's start right here. Let's scribe our center line. And let's don't scribe this too hard. I've actually cut through my paper. There we go. Now let's fold this over. Let's see how our measurements are first off. Almost exact. Very cool. So right down here, let's make a mark at one half of an inch. And then up here, let's come up a little bit further than our two inches. Let's come up to three inches. So all I'm going to do now is let's just make an even cut across. Okay, that looks good. So again, one more reset, but we're on our last piece. Let's get our brim done, then we're ready to cut some leather. Now, I want to mention this just so there's no confusion here. I mentioned we're going 110 degrees. Actually, when I drop my protractor on this, not a scientific piece of equipment, and we drew in our line, but the point is, is that we're actually at about 105 degrees and not 110. Where's this important? Well, right down here, we need to determine the length of this outside edge. Easy enough. We're going to measure this with a tape measure, but how about we use our math? Let's see if this is going to work for us. All right, so 14 inches times 2 for our diameter times pi 3.148792. So divide by 360. That's 0.244 inches per degree, okay? 105 degrees, so times 105, that's 25.64 inches. So about 25 and 5 eighths inches. But we've dropped an inch, so let's do this, minus one inch, okay? 24.64, again, about 24 and 5 eighths of an inch. Let's measure this with our tape measure. Great part about this, is now that we've got an edge, makes this very easy to measure. 24 and 5 eighths, exactly. We can do this either way. Okay, so one more reset. Then we're going to get to cut some leather. So let's make our brim. Now on our brim, what we're going to do is we're going to sew this to the inside of the hat, and we're going to circle around and bring it out front. So we need about a half inch there. So let's make this two and a half inches wide. So I know this is two inches, so let's go a half inch further. Good, and let's draw this line in. Okay, our next measurement. Like I said, we're gonna need about a half inch across the bottom, we're not gonna see that. So of the two inches, let's split that in half. Let's come down exactly one inch. Good, now let's draw in that line. Okay, let's get a center line on this. Now these are 28 inches wide, this poster board. So let's draw in a good, thick center line. Good. Now, we're going to make one inch dags, or points. So let's draw in a line, one inch increments, out to 12 inches on either side. Okay, we've got that marked in. Now, this is going to be hard to explain, but I'll do my best. So if we make points, basically what we're going to do is come from the top to the bottom and back again, all the way out. Well, I would typically start with a point right up front, but if we look at this, what's going to happen is when we get out here, we've got a point all the way up here on our last piece. 
What I'd like is for the point right here. So we trim this down, straight down, that's the back of the hat. The point I'm getting at is instead of starting as a, with a point right here in the center, let's start with a dip. So I'm gonna draw in my lines. Yeah, I flipped the paper over thinking the matte side would be better with the pen. Still an absolute mess. Okay, so over here, now let's work our way out making points. And our last line. Yeah, this side of the poster board is just as big a mess. Okay, so let's cut this out. Now, one big point here. You can absolutely use a square to cut these if you're not comfortable cutting these by hand. But the bigger point, not one of my points. is absolutely perfect. Doesn't have to be. We'll never see that. And our last. There we go. Well, that looks good. Yeah, I don't want to look at that side. It's a mess. But anyway, that's ready to go, 24 inches long. Finally, we get to cut some leather. Now, we didn't do a digital pick with a pattern. That would be so much faster. But all told, on a project like this, we need to look at how we develop our pattern. Absolutely. All right, so let's get some leather out. Let's get rolling on this. At Weaver, we've got some of the prettiest suede colors I have ever seen. So for our hat, let's go with our forest green for the main part of the hat, brim, right here, this beautiful crisp red. So let's start right here. Suede can be hard to mark out, but we're gonna make it easy. Now, suede does have a face and a back. We can typically figure that out right there. That's our foot stamp. But in all honesty, sometimes I can't tell the difference. That's a big help to us. Now we could, we're gonna go with a straight band for our brim, but we could go with a bias cut. That simply means I'm gonna cut on the curve. Well, what actually happens is when we bend this around, the bias cut, the brim's gonna stick out. Where if we go with a straight cut, it's gonna wanna draw in. So let's start right here, making this easy. Let's just cut out a two and a half inch wide band this length. Now, big point on this one. I always say new project, new blade, but with suede, absolutely, because biggie, suede's eat blades. They absolutely do. And there we go. We've got our band. Now with this, we can mark this with a pen. We can mark it on the back with a pen. But really, the easiest thing to do here, let's just lay in our pattern, and we're gonna cut this freehand. Well, there we go. That was easy enough, and that looks good. Okay, let's reset, get our green out, cut that. With our green, this is a tough color to mark. So let's do this. Let's drop this in, use an all. It's not a perfect system, but let's scratch into this pretty hard. Yeah, we can see that enough. Yeah, now the camera won't pick that up, but I can see that pretty well. So let's trim this out. We're going to go by hand. And our last cut. Okay, well, that's not too bad. So now we finally get a change in scenery. Let's step over to our pattern table, glue on our brim. Well, this looks good already. We're gonna add some spots, a brass bell. This is not gonna be a cheap felt hat by any means. It's gonna be a quality project. So right here, what I need to do, we're gonna sew this and then flip it inside out. So I want my backing face up when we go to glue. In all honesty, I cannot tell which is our backing on this. Yay, quality leather. So let's just go right here. So on our brim, we're gonna lay this in upside down and I want my face out because when we flip this around that's actually going to be on the outside of the hat so backing up but our brim face up 
Now, we'll use our double-sided tape when we hit this seam, but for now, I need a good bond here because we're going to be squeezing this around. So let's go with our S18, our contact cement. So down here at the bottom, let's give ourselves a little room for error. I don't have as much needle time as I would like. So I'm going to give us about maybe three-eighths of an inch glue along our bottom edge. But also, let's come in about half of an inch on both sides. Now, this can be a little bit of a help because if we get glue on our suede, we're going to see it. We can't get that back off. So what we could do is just lay this on the edge of our table. It's just barely in our camera shot. But now I can take my glue and run off the edge. I'm not worried about getting the glue on my table, thus transferring it onto my suede. And let's stop about a half inch in. Nice. Okay. Let's set that piece aside. Now, for our brim... I'm going to go with the back side down. So let's see if we can figure that out. You know what? I got a little bit of a blemish right there. So let's add our glue to this side. And just fill in a couple of areas. Okay, that looks good. So now we're going to give this just about five minutes. We're going to let that glue set. We want it to appear dry, to feel dry, but to feel tacky. So let's give that just a couple of minutes. We've had some dry time with our glue, and that looks good. So let's start over here, and we're going to go down. So let's come in about half of an inch, and I'm going to come in about three-eighths of an inch, maybe between a quarter of an inch and three-eighths, and let's just work that around. Now, we can't see what we're doing here, but I can feel that edge. So let's make sure we give ourselves a little extra room to make sure we get a good stitch line in that. And there we go. Perfect. Let's step over to our 303, drop in a stitch line on this. We can absolutely sew this by hand if we don't have a machine. Suede's got a little bit of body to it, but it's also a little bit thick, so it looks pretty good with a hand-sewn stitch. But we've got a 303. Let's use it. I love this machine. And down to the end, one more stitch. Let's back stitch on that. And then one forward. Well, very good. Look at that pretty stitch line. That looks good. Okay, so let's trim this. We're going to jump back over to our pattern table. Let's drop in our double sided tape, sew this together. Now we can somewhat see what I was talking about with that bias cut. Notice our suede, it wants to bend up now. So what we're going to do, we're going to sew this inside out, then reverse it. So now we want our face up. We're going to put our tape on this side. So let's swing this around, fold it over. Let's get our edges to meet, and I'm going to press right there on our point. Let's open that up. Okay, we know right where the top is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start maybe three-eighths of an inch, give or take, maybe a half of an inch, and I'm going to run my double-sided tape down and our double-sided tape. This is a big help to us. We actually have this in two sizes, 3 16 inch and 3 32 inch. And right down to our end. Now, the only frustrating part about our tape is trying to separate it. But if we, if we scrape back... I can see the adhesive separate. There we go. So now I can peel the tape off. The adhesive remains. Okay, we've got that. Now let's fold this over. Make those edges meet as best we can. Good. There we go. Okay, let's jump back to our 303. Put in our last stitch line.
Good. Now let's come in one stitch and let's back stitch five. And there we go. Easy enough. Now, quick sales pitch. I love the 303. If you're new to Leathercraft or like me, we don't come out of a production shop. Easy to operate, easy to maintain, easy to thread. And you notice how slow we can go with this machine. What a pretty stitch line. Okay, back over to our pattern table. I'm almost a little worried here. I should have shaved one stitch off of that because we're going to put a piece of lace through this to secure our bell. But nonetheless, I think we're going to be okay. So let's take an all. Now suede's not going to reverse out like fabric will. We're going to have to work this. But what I can do is push that all through there. I can grab the end of it and now we can use that to help reverse this out. Good. Now I can switch my hand around and I can use the inside. I can grab the handle of that all and that will help me push this out too. But again, we're just going to have to work it a little bit. And I think that's about as far out as I can work that. It's not a perfect point. doesn't have to. Our bell is going to sit right there. Okay, so we're going to jump over to our punch table because we've got to add spots to this one. The brass spots and a solid brass bell, absolutely going to bring this together. So we set spots in most of our videos, so I'm not going to go into great detail there. But let's lay in a cardboard pallet. Now I'm just going to pull this over and lay this flat. Good. It's not binding left or right. Now I'm going to eyeball this, but I'm going to try to drop my spot in about three-eighths of an inch and three-eighths of an inch. It doesn't matter how high or low it is. It just matters if they're consistent. Now I'm right-handed, so we should have stayed at the pattern table. But what I'm going to do, let's press, press our spot in. Now with suede, always hard to see, but I can see that. So now with those two slits, I'm going to press my knife through our leather into a cardboard pallet. Now let's make sure we get all the way through that suede, but I don't want more slit than spot. So let's leave it right where it is. And let's press those tines through. I know, try to do that to where I can see it and we can see it with the camera. Good, now let's press down onto that just right, okay? Let's flip this over. I'm gonna bend my tines in, but this can be a little tricky with a round spot. So I'm gonna press on this tine and I'm gonna push that tine over. Makes it a little easier, okay? Same thing on the other side, good. Last step, let's put this flush we're flat on our quartz and just give it a small tap, maybe two, because now I can feel those, they've curled in. We're going to have hair under this. I really want those to sink in. Don't want it grabbing on hair, but it feels good right there. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing to the balance of the points. Well, I tell you what, that hat looks good. Good, very cool. One more step, let's add our bell. You can actually hear these bells coming. It's the same bell we use on our sleigh bell strap. So we can go with just about any lace here, but we've got suede, how about we use this? So I'm gonna square that, get a good straight line. So let's cut this at just about maybe 3 16 inch, just something below about a quarter, and we only need about a foot or less. Good, okay. Let's cut that off. Now we're gonna use permalock needles to get this through this hole. So let's cut a good taper on that. Let's run one in through our bell. Right there, good. Now we cut a taper because a permalock needle, that has a hole in the end and it's threaded. So we literally can screw that right onto our lace. Good, so let's run one side through. And same on the other side. And we've got that pulled through, got it tucked down in there nicely. Now, one thing, yeah, this can make us a little bit crazy. What we can do is just cut a piece about 
half inch, maybe five eighths of an inch. Push that down into the bell. Basically, that's just going to make a damper. So yeah, now we can work without the noise, but I love the sound of those. Okay, so let's take off our permalock needles. Okay, now let's pull this through. We're almost going to reverse it back because what we want to do now, let's just tie a good square knot and let's get that as close as we can to that bell. Nice. Okay, let's trim that. And there we are. Well, we got to pull that out now. That is a good looking hat. Love this outcome. I have to say, it's a good, comfortable fit. But we've got a problem. We can't see the top of the hat. Well, that's okay because, yeah, now we're pulling it off. I hope it is a hat worthy of the elves, and I am certain that every elf that gets a hat from you is going to love it. Good luck with your projects.